Mr. Park. Uh huh. Am I allowed to drink? Yeah. Of course. Okay. It's lunchtime. Okay, there's two kinds of logic problems that you're going to get. You've got the symbolic logic, and then you got like logic puzzles. You guys know how to do logic puzzles already, yeah? Okay, so we're just going to do the symbolic logic. So first thing are the truth tables. So, yeah. So what, I, 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 saw, I saw the end part, it was, it was true, false, true. That's okay, I'm just going to explain from the beginning. Quack, you don't need to be here. It's okay. You guys, you guys kind of understand emails or what? Oh. Okay, every statement in logic is either true or false. Okay? So, the simplest truth table is negation, like this. This is not P, the negation of statement P. So, P is either true or false, then the negation is going to be false true, right? Because if statement P is true, then its negation has got to be false. If statement P is false, its negation has to be true. So, that's kind of obvious. Again, okay, well, when you get to what happens when you have two statements, P and Q, well, there are four possibilities. And this is the standard way of writing out all four possibilities in logic. P will always be true, true, false, false. And Q will always be true, false, true, false. That's just standard, all four possibilities. OK, so the first statement is this one. This is read the disjunction of P and Q, or we simply say P or Q. The OR statement is true when at least one of the two components is true. So you just ask yourself, is at least one of them true? Yes. Is at least one of them true? Is at least one of them true? Is at least one of them true? No, so it's false. Now ultimately, you're just going to memor have these things memorized already. But when you first learn them, that's, that's the way you do it, right? The OR statement is true when at least one of them is, one of them is true. OK, this is the conjunction of P and Q. Or we simply say P and Q. The and statement is true when both components are true. So since both of them are true, it's true. Are both of them true? No. Are both of them true? No. Are both of them true? No. Okay, next one is the conditional statement. This one, when you see this, if P, then Q. You guys brought your notes? So one way to say this is if P, then Q. But there's lots of different ways to, to, to say this also. Another way would be P implies Q. Another way would be Q if P. Another one would be P only if Q. Another way would be P is a sufficient condition for Q. Or another way would be Q is a necessary condition for P. We started already, but we recorded it, so you can Okay, so you got to know all of them. You got to know all of them. Now, what is the truth table for the conditional statement going to be? It's true, false, true, true. The only time a conditional statement is false, and this is, this is important, the only time a conditional statement is false is when the first part is true and the second part is false. It's true in every other case. Now, when you have a conditional statement, you can form these other statements from it. Okay, so here's a conditional statement, which is P implies Q. You can form the inverse of it. You guys know what that is? Not P implies not Q. And then you can form a converse, which is if Q then P. And then you can form the contrapositive which is not Q implies not P. So you got to know all of these. So logic, it's, it's not that difficult, but you got to know all these things. Anyway, and then now that we have the conditional, now we have the biconditional statement. Notice the arrow going both ways. The biconditional statement is true when the two components are the same. See, both true or both false. And they're false when they're different. One is true, one is false. So these are all the truth tables that you need to have memorized for this event. These are the basic truth tables. Now, when you're thinking, what do we use them for? Why do we even learn truth tables? 
Well, what if I ask you to make a truth table for this statement? Uh, okay, so let's write out all four possibilities first. True, true, false, false. True, false, true, false. Okay, construct the truth table for not P or Q. Well, P or Q is what? No, let me raise that. P or Q is true, true, her. True, 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 false, right? So when you negate that, it's going to be false, 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 true, correct? Negate, negation is just like opposite, like, like a negative number. But the only difference is numbers are negative, but statements have negations. So this is it right there. Okay, now what if I ask you to construct the true table for not P and not Q? That's the same thing. Yeah, 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 wait. Okay, so P is true, true, false, false. So not P is going to be false, false, true, true. Q is true, false, true, false, so the negation is going to be false, true, false, true. But then you have to put these two together with and. When is the and statement true? When both, when both of them are true. So the only time when both of them are true is right here. And then it's going to be false in all the other cases. And then you look at these two. Hey, they're the same. When two statements have exactly the same truth table, we say that they are logically equivalent. And this is super important. That's the symbol for logically equivalent. Notice that it looks like an equal sign, yeah? Numbers are equal, but statements are logically equivalent. It's, it's the same meaning, though. In fact, this is a famous one. This is called um, De Morgan's Law. In fact, it, it's kind of like the distributive property, yeah? You can distribute a negation sign to an OR statement, except you've got to change the OR to AND. Because some of the problems on the, on the, on the worksheets they ask which of the following statements are logically equivalent to this one. That means they have exactly the same truth table. Now, there are certain ones that you have to have memorized, and those are the ones that are in the notes. Okay, we just have to memorize. Because we don't want to just be making truth tables all the time, right? Now, sometimes you actually have to. But the ones that you're supposed to memorize, you're just supposed to know, right? So here's another one. The negation of P and Q is not P or not Q. So you can distribute the negation to an AND or an OR statement, but you have to switch it, the AND to the OR or the OR to the AND. Now, here's another important one. A conditional statement is always logically equivalent to its contrapositive. And if you don't believe me, just make a true table. We just memorize. And another one is a conditional statement is always logically equivalent to an OR statement. So if you want to replace one with the other, you just negate the first, leave the second one alone. Question. Anyway, these are all in the notes. You just got to have them at the tip of your fingers, at the tip of your brain. Okay, any questions on these then? So you can make a true table for anything, yeah? Now, what happens when you have three statements? Like, what if, what if you had P, Q, and R? Then what happens is there's eight possibilities now. So the standard way in logic is to do it like this. Now, I don't think you're going to get eight, I mean, three statements, but I'm just preparing you. So it looks like this. So P goes true, 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 false, 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 false. And then Q alternates by two. It's true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. And then R is going to alternate by one. It's true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. So if, if you have to make a truth table for something with three statements, that's, that's how you can start. But I don't think you're going to get that, so you don't have to worry. OK, so the next thing now, arguments. If I give you some, uh, did you guys? Was it clear when we talked about modus ponens like that? You know the video? Or was it blurry pretty much the whole time? Okay, we'll just go from the beginning then. Okay, there are two very famous arguments in logic. The first one is called modus ponens. You don't have to know the name. Okay, which is this. If P, then Q. P, therefore Q. Okay, now, this is a valid argument. Now, what is a valid argument? A valid argument means whenever these are true, this will be true. These are called the premises. Premises are statements that are assumed to be true. Okay? So if we assume these two statements to be true, then this follows from it. This is what we call a logical conclusion. So whenever these are true, if that comes out true, we call this a valid argument. 
Now, you can always prove arguments are valid by making a truth table. So I'm just going to do this really quickly. So this is what you do. You make a truth table. Here's the first premise. Here's the second premise. Put a double I. And here's the conclusion. So you just make a truth table. So quickly, P implies Q. You guys remember? True, false, true, true. P is always true, true, false, false. And Q is always true, false, true, false. So what you're looking for for a valid argument, since these are the two premises, whenever the two premises are true in line one, and that's all. Sometimes they come out both true in more than one line. But when they're both true, does the conclusion also come out true? Yeah, so therefore this is a valid argument. That's what a valid argument is. Whenever these are true, this will be true. Okay, and the other one is called the law of syllogism. Like, you guys don't have to take notes now, it's all in the notes. P implies Q, Q implies R, therefore P implies R. Doesn't that make sense? Okay, no, and we're not going to prove that this is a valid argument, but if you did make a true table, whenever these are true, this one will always be true also, so therefore it's valid. Now what you have to be able to do is, if they give you a set of premises, you have to be able to deduce a valid conclusion. If P then Q and P is false but Q is true, then how come it's true? Okay, well that's just by definition. Okay, but here, to help you think about it, okay. I don't know, did I, 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 did I even do it on the video? It's homework thing. What? If, I, if you do your homework, then you get five dollars. Oh yeah. Oh, somebody watched the video. It was on the video then. That's okay, I'll explain it then. True, false, true, false. And then this one is true, false, true, true. So you're saying, why is it when this one is false, why it doesn't come out true? Well, one way of thinking, well, this is not why, but this kind of helps you think about it. What if I make this statement? If you do your homework, then I will pay you $5. So what if you did your homework, and then I paid you $5? Am I a liar? No, so it's true, right? What if you did your homework, and I didn't pay you the $5? Then I'm a liar, right? Okay, so that's why it's false. What if you didn't do your homework and I don't pay you the five dollars? Am I a liar? No, see, that's true. What if you didn't do your homework? Oh, and I did pay you five dollars. I'm not a liar, just stupid, right? Yeah, so so that's why the only time I'm a liar is when you did your homework but I didn't pay you the five dollars. Yeah. So you can kind of think about it like that if you want to. So just assign an actual situation. No, no, no. See, that's the beauty of symbolic logic. Symbolic logic, it doesn't matter what the meaning of the statements are. If you just make, if you like let, represent, let each phrase represent a, a letter, then you just look at the form. So then you don't, you don't have to rely on the meaning of the words anymore. So, so what was I talking about? Oh, valid arguments. Okay, so let's, let's start off simple. P implies Q, not, ah. Q implies R, R implies S, P. Therefore, what? S. Well, yeah. So after a while, you can just look at it and see. Like, using the law of syllogism, if P implies Q, Q implies R, R implies S, then can't you say P implies S? But P, therefore, S. That's modus ponens. Okay, that's easy. Okay, kick it up a notch. P implies Q. I think these are the same examples I gave when I did the thing. Okay, so the first thing you do is, okay, any conditional statement is equivalent to its contrapositive. What's the contrapositive of that? Not Q implies not P. So look, gorilla implies banana. Gorilla, therefore, banana. Okay, next one. Uh, P or Q, not P, therefore what? Well, what you want to do is anytime you see an or statement, you want to change it to a conditional statement. And how do you do that? You negate the first and leave the second one alone, right? Remember that thing we had down there? Okay, now once you do that, look how easy this is. Gorilla implies banana. Gorilla, therefore banana. Hey, this is pretty easy. Okay, you think you're good? Not P and Q. Uh, P, therefore, what? 
So the first thing you do is you want to distribute this negation sign so you got not P or not Q, right? And then we can change an OR statement to a conditional statement by negating the first and leaving the second one alone. And then now we have both exponents. Gorilla implies banana. Gorilla, therefore banana. So it's actually quite simple. Now what you guys have to get used to is the biconditional statement. What if you had this? P if and only if Q, Q. Now a biconditional statement means you can go either direction. This means, the actual meaning of this is P implies Q and Q implies P. So you can use it in both directions, so you use it in whichever direction is going to help you. Like in this case, you want to use this one, right? Because look, gorilla implies banana. Gorilla, therefore banana. So if you have a biconditional statement, it's, it's, easier. it's actually easier because you can use it in either direction. Okay, and then I guess the last thing I have to talk to you guys about is negation. You have to be able to negate statements, okay? Uh, okay, did, was it clear when I was talking about universal and existential statements? <laughs> okay, there exist. What about the symbols? Did you guys bring your notes? Uh, ah! what? Is negation just like making it so then that it's just basically not true? Like the yeah, okay, you know what? Let's just keep it simple then. Okay, let's start off easy. So here's a statement. Let's make a chart. And here's the negation. Not B. X equal to who? X is not Okay, that's, that's simple, yeah? X is greater than 2. X is what? No. Yeah, please don't write X is not greater than 2. Okay? <laughs> I mean, that's actually correct, but we've got to simplify. X is less than or equal to 2, right? What are all the numbers that are not greater than 2? Well, it'll be the numbers that are less than or equal to 2, right? X is less than 3. X is greater than 2. Okay, so that's easy. Uh, all prime numbers are odd. What would be the negation of that? So one way of thinking about it is, if somebody made this statement, what would you have to do to prove that person wrong? All prime numbers are not odd. So what? Some all prime numbers are tolerances. Some prime numbers are not odd, which is even. Just remember, the negation of all is going to be sum. The negation of sum is going to be all. Sum prime numbers are even. All prime numbers are odd. Yeah, so it would be all prime numbers are not even, which would be odd. Yeah? You guys get it? Okay, what about this? No prime numbers are even. All prime numbers are all prime numbers are even. Well, if somebody said, no prime numbers are even, what would it take to prove that person wrong? Some, some. some prime numbers are even. even. Also, no, it's just... Some prime numbers are even. So what's the question? No, no. I mean, okay. Okay, so you think you're good, yeah? Wait. So, wait, so no prime numbers are even is the exact same statement as all prime numbers are odd. Say that again? So no prime numbers are even. Wait, no, it's a contrapositive. What? I don't know. What are you saying? Uh, aren't these the same because, I mean, if you, I mean, if, because they're these, negations of... These, yeah, these two are the same. So you're saying that since these are the same, these have to be the same? Mm, I don't know, because I mean, if you, if you can negate this to that, and you can negate it back, if you use this statement, then you could also get that instead. Wait, so all prime numbers are odd. Does that mean the same thing as no prime numbers are even? So. Yeah, yeah. So yes, yes. You know what he's saying? He's saying since these are the same, and this is the negation of that, and this is the negation of that, then these two have to be the same too. Then. Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's kick it up a notch. Q 
Let's take another table. Okay, how do you negate an or statement? P or Q, what's the negation of that? Yeah, just dis dis distribute the negation sign. So the negation of that would be not P or Q, but we don't, which is? Not P, not P and not, not Q. What's the negation of P and Q? Not, not, not P, P or not, not Q. Q. Okay, not P or not Q. Okay, now this is where we separate the sheep from the goats. P implies Q. Not P implies not, not, not Q. No, 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 no. P and not Q. Oh. What? Here, I'll tell you why. Because is it a conditional statement logically equivalent? Here, why don't I just leave it up there? Isn't that equivalent to not P or Q? Remember, you can change a conditional to an or statement, right? You negate the first, leave the second, and one, oh. So how do you negate an or statement? That's just like the one up here. You distribute the negation sign and you get P and not Q. So the negation of a conditional statement is actually an and statement. So you gotta be careful about now. So the kinds of problems you're gonna get, so like, you know the last part of the notes? You don't even have to look at the, the last page because that's uh, like way beyond what you need to know. So you just have to know this basic stuff over here and you should be able to do symbolic logic. Probably my guess is like the ones that you need to take care of is which of the following statements, in fact, here, let me give you a problem. So which of the following statements are logically equivalent to, make up something, not B implies A. Okay, so here, A. Uh, well, A implies not B. C, not A implies B. Uh, why am I doing C? Because I'm going to put B over here. Uh, B implies not A. Uh, D, uh, uh, B or A, E, uh, B and A, F, uh, uh, not, not B and not A, uh, G, not B and not A, and H, B or A. Well, we already got that. Not B if and only if A. So which ones are logically equivalent to that? Well, first of all, you gotta know pick out the ones you know, like contrapositive. What? Which one is the contrapositive? Isn't so not, it this one? Not A to B. Yeah. Okay. And then how do you change a conditional to or or vice versa? Um, you negate the first. Negate one. the first, leave the second one. So this one. D. But then if it's D, isn't it F? Because this one, if you just distribute the negation sign, you get that, right? And anything else? Uh, oh, wait. Well, so and G. statements are out already. You, can, you cannot, an and statement will never be logically equivalent to a conditional, only an or. Now, if you come across something that you don't know, then what you do is you make a truth table. Mm -hmm. Yeah? If you don't know. I think I wrote one like that a couple years ago, that's why it's might be in your pack at the time. So that's how, that's how I write problems. I make ones that are kind of obvious, and then I put a few at the end where you actually got to make a true table. Okay, so that's it. It's, it's, this is really not that hard, this event. But once you get, the hardest part is getting these things down. So you, you have to know which statements are logically equivalent, and then you got to know how to make true tables. Okay, that's it. Okay, so worksheets due next week, Wednesday, by 7.40. Yeah? Okay, see you later. So if you...